This video reviews the outputs of thermal comfort analysis in Sapphire architecture and Sapphire systems, including how to interpret the results and export assets. In a previous video, I showed how to set up a thermal comfort simulation, and here I've already run the simulation, in this case for a naturally ventilated building that has heating but no cooling. Let's take a look at the results. Here I'm in the thermal comfort tab and I'm looking at the dry bulb temperature outputs. At the top we can see a summary of the performance. In this case seven zones have failed the comfort test and it tells me which the worst zone is, uh, P09. We can click on any of the zones to get a more detailed set of outputs. So we can see the percentage of time that is too hot or too co cold and some information on the input values that were used. This zone clearly fails, and we can also take a look at zones that have passed. We can also change the color scale of this graphic to get a more nuanced view in terms of the magnitude by which the zone has passed or failed. It's not possible at this time to export this graphic, but you can always take a screenshot of it, and I often zoom in on it to get a larger resolution image before I take that screenshot. Let's take a look at some of the other outputs. The next one is operative temperature, which is often more useful or more representative than dry bulb temperature because it includes factors other than just air temperature, namely humidity and radiant temperature. The information that you see in this panel is very similar to the dry bulb temperature. Uh, similarly, we can click on any of the zones to see more information and we can change the color scale to get a more granular view of the outputs. One thing you might notice in the operative temperature analysis is that some of the zones have hours that are too cold even though I have heating. Why might that be? Well, there are a few possibilities. You could have cold glazing that contributes to a feeling of being too cold, a thermal mass, short warm-up cycles, or overnight setbacks. Those are all things that can lead to thermal comfort issues. And in fact, many of those factors are things that you can adjust and study in relation to thermal comfort. One thing that I notice right off the bat about these results is that most of the zones on the west, south, and east face are the ones that are least comfortable, whereas the zones on the north tend to be more comfortable. Uh, that suggests to me that one possible cause is solar gain and that shading might be something I want to look at. The final output is PMV, or predicted mean vote, and again, there are similar types of outputs uh, for this type of analysis. Now, one great feature of Sapphire's thermal comfort analysis is the ability to download the test results and the hourly data as Excel files. Let's download both of these and take a look. The first Excel file is the test result file, and this will show the thermal comfort results for each zone in the building. The second file is the hourly data, and this has the hour-by-hour hour results for every zone in the building for every hour of the year. And this data is pretty powerful and allows some pretty deep dives into the thermal comfort results. Just as a quick example, I've plotted a line graph that shows the operative temperature in each zone over the course of a 24-hour period. And this is just one quick example of the types of visualizations that you can create with this hour-by-hour hour data. So that's an overview of thermal comfort analysis in Sapphira. As usual, you can find more detailed information in Sapphira's knowledge base.